Welcome to the second part of generics. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you've watched the previous video or the first part of generics in order to get a good understanding. In our last video, we learned how we can add constraints or bounds to our generic type. And as you can see here, in our function, we have added one constraint. So we said that T must inherit from the developer class. And the developer class is just an abstract class. And here we have three classes that inherit from the developer class. We have a web developer, Android developer, and iOS developer. So whenever we use this function, hire developer, we have to pass an instance or a child or developer. And here I pass the web developer, Android developer, iOS developer. And whenever I pass anything rather than a developer, we will have a compile time error. So an error while we write our program. And for instance, you can see here that I passed a string, but it required a developer. Now, what if we want to add multiple constraints? So if we run the program, we will hire every developer. Doesn't matter what, what kind of developer he was, we will just hire every developer. But now we want to hire a developer with some experience. And for that, I've made an interface called prior experience. And I've made the Android developer class the only class that inherits from the prior experience. So now I want to add this constraint to our function right here. So the first thing that you would do is, is that you will declare your generic type like you would normally do. And after the function or after the function's signature, you would write your constraints with the where keyword. And here you add your constraints separated by a comma. So here I'm going to say T must be a child class or must inherit from developer. Then T must inherit from prior experience. And as you can see in our main function, we cannot pass web developer nor iOS developer because both of them don't implement the prior experience interface. The only one who is legit for this function is the Android developer because Android developer inherits from the prior interface. And now we're going to delete these. And if we run the program, the output will be like the one we have here. As we have seen before, we can assign a subtype value to a supertype variable. So here we have two variables, the first one of type string and the second one of type any. And we assigned the variable of type any to the string, as any is the parent class of the string class. And we could also do it with our classes here. So I'm going to make a val car of type car equal to car and val vehicle of type vehicle, which is equal to car. Nothing's wrong. Everything works. But what if generics were involved in our class declaration? So I'm just going to comment this class out because we're going to play with the vehicle class for now, even this two lines of code here. And here I'm going to make two instances of our vehicle class. But first, let's declare a generic type here. And I'm going to make our first instance. So I'm going to name it v string, and it's going to be of type vehicle of type string. And it's going to equal to vehicle of string as well. The second one is going to be val v any, and it's going to be vehicle of type any. And now we're going to assign it to the string here. So as you can see, we have a compile time error. Though any class is the parent of the string class. And both of these variables are of type vehicle. So what's wrong here? The compiler doesn't know what to do. And this is called invariant. So to resolve this issue, we have to use declaration site variants. And now we're going to learn about two different modifiers or two different variants annotations. The first one is called out. So here we want to assign a subtype of some class or a generic of subtype to a generic of supertype. So for this, we're going to use the out modifier here. And now as you can see, the error is gone and we are able to assign it. But there are some concerns you have to keep in mind about the out modifier. 
So the out modifier for our generic type here will make our class be in a producer position only. So what does that mean? It means that our class will only produce values of type D through its functions, but it will never consume them. And when I say consume, I mean that it will never take any value of type D in its arguments or in its functions arguments. Let's try this. So here I'm going to have one property within the functions or within the class constructor. It's going to be called private val body. It's of type D. And since it's private, we have to add a helping function to get it from the outside of the class. So I'm going to make fun, get body type, and it will just return T. And here you're going to say return the body value. And as you can see, nothing is wrong as our class here or our function here is producing the type D. But what if, try, what, if, what if we try to consume it? So to consume it, we will try to get it in the arguments here. So I'm going to make, I'm going to try to take another type of type T or another body type of type T and see we have a compile time error. And the out modifier is called covariant modifier. And whenever your class is covariant, you know that your class only produces the generic type, but never consume them, like we tried to do here. Now, what if we try to assign our body of type T that was marked with out to another property with our class here? So here I'm going to make a property with the val keyword called the value, and it's of type T, and it's equal to the body right here. And you can see it's working since the variable was made with the val keyword, so it makes it read only. So we are not consuming it. But once we start to make it with the var keyword, here we are trying to consume the value as the var keyword makes the value read and write. So we can modify the value of type T. So as a summary, the out modifier will make our class in a producer position, and the class becomes read only so we cannot modify any variable that was made or any variable of type t now let's look at the second type of variance annotation or the counterpart to the out modifier right here which is the in modifier so with the out modifier we will able to assign a vehicle of type string to a vehicle of type any or a vehicle of subtype to a vehicle of supertype so if we try to add the end here, the roles will be reversed. So it reverses the subtyping. So now we will make it the other way around. Let's just do it from scratch. So here I'm going to have val, val v vehicle any of equal to v vehicle of type any. And here I'm going to have val v string, which is of type vehicle of type string. And now I'm going to assign this vehicle or this vehicle of type string, which is a vehicle of a subtype to our vehicle of super type. So V in. So now you can see how the subtyping is reversed. So the vehicle class of type any is acting as if it was a child of the vehicle class of type string. But what does the n modifier do to our class? In order to know that, let's get back our constructor and our function. And as you can see here, we cannot produce any values with the generic type T, though we can we can still consume it. So we're going to make value of type T as the argument. So this is how we consume it. And we're not going to return anything. And as a result of this function, we are just going to print the value. So this is how the in modifier work. It will make your class be a contravariant class, meaning that your class will become write only class and your class will be able to consume values of the type T or of the generic type. And if you want to make your class read and write or invariant, then you don't have to add any modifiers. And here you're going to be able to consume and produce the value. So here, instead of printing, I'm just going to return the value. But notice one thing that once we get rid of any modifiers for our generic type, 
we will not be able to do our subtyping just like before. Sometimes declaring generic type in a function or class might be redundant. As our function here, we have declared a generic type t and we use it to get just a list of type t and finally we print it. We didn't specify any constraints to the generic type, so we really don't care about what elements or what type of elements we get within this list. So instead of doing that, instead of declaring a generic type, we would simply use the star projection. And here, instead of saying list of t, we say list of star. And whenever we use this function, we just pass whatever values we want to pass. So one, maybe a string, maybe some other class like unit, maybe an array of values, and it will work the same as if we have declared a generic type. So that was it for the second and the last part of generics video. I know understanding generics might seem hard at first, but once you practice them and make use of the benefits that they give you, you'll be able to tackle them. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next video.